through telephone and through the chat in the platform. This event is being recorded and will be made available at our site www.ng.com slash IR and the release and in the presentation you can find the detailed information on the operations, the advance of the product Checks and a financial analysis. Before proceeding, I would like to clarify that all statements made during this conference call referring to the company's outlook should be treated as forecasts that depend on the country's macroeconomic conditions, on the performance and regulation of the electrical sector and other variables. They are therefore subject to changes. My colleague is Marcelo Malta, the chief Chief Financial Officer, who will also talk about the company's performance in the third quarter of 2021. For journalists that would like to ask questions, please send them to the company's press office. I would like to give the floor to Malta. Malta, you may proceed. Thank you very much, Rafael. A good morning to all of you. It is a pleasure to be here with you to show you our results for the third quarter. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, Malta, I believe the uh, slide is uh, that we will begin on is slide number five. On slide number five, we show you the highlights for the third quarter, and uh, you see the main drivers during the quarter, both positive and negative. We had in this quarter the approval of the law and a renegotiation of the hydrological risk. These were impacts that we underwent in the past and now in this quarter. With the enforcement of this law, we will be able to recover uh, what was due to us in the past. I would like to remind you that last year, we also uh, recorded the effects referring to the plants that had had this problem with energy and we are now referring to plants that uh, fall under the regulation between the years 2012 and 2014. We had a positive effect in our results this quarter of 372 million reais. Because of this, it is important to also mention that we still have an amount that will be recorded in the fourth quarter of this year and that refers to the plants in which we participate in as a consortium. This is a demand that was made by the National Electrical Energy Agency. And until November of this year, we will have to deliver all of the documentation that is required and sign it. Some of our partners have already signed these documents. Uh, with others, this is still pending and we're depending on their governance. And we do have the expectation that until the end of November, all of this documentation will be sent to ANEL, enabling us to record the failures that happened in these plants. And they represent a significant amount during the quarter. We also have a reduction in our energy volume. This had already been foreseen in our strategy. And unfortunately, this become, became somewhat exacerbated because of the steep prices that were observed during this quarter. On the other hand, because of this, we had a reduction in uh, the sale of energy as well. 
when we speak about amounts, the reduction in the purchase volume um, reached 153 million. We had a positive effect in transmission of 89 million, which basically results from the update based on the IPCA of some assets that we have in Gralla Azul, uh, additionally to the advance in the CAPEX that we had and the implementation of these plants. We had an inflation that generated a significant impact on our revenues, uh, considering that our contracts are indexed to the IPCA, most of them at least. And we had a significant impact on accounts payable, but we ended up having a positive result in our financial expenses of 35 million, I believe. Now, negative drivers, an increase in the monetary restatement of IPCA on debts if compared to the third quarter of 2020. And we did pay an important installment of our debt, which led to an increase in our financial expenses of approximately 210 million reais. Uh, we have already mentioned that we had a reduction in the volume of our energy purchases, as well as a drop in the sale. Now, this drop was also caused as a result of our uh, portfolio management process, uh, and additionally, by the purchase of energy, as mentioned previously. If we compare the quarters, we had this negative impact of 3 million hairs, referring to the transactions carried out at the CCEE and because of GFS. It is important here to mention that the mi millions that I mentioned is simply a variation among quarters. In the third quarter of 2020, we had an impact in our transactions of CCEE of only 80 million reais. I say only 80 million reais because uh, we presented the more significant impacts because of the hydrological issues that we observe in the country and a PLD that has reached a ceiling. If we look at the nine months of 2021, we had a negative impact in the transactions carried out with CCEE of 94 million reais. Now, vis-a-vis -vis this very serious hydrological uh, crisis that we are facing in the country. We have uh, carried out a management of our portfolio as we have presented during this entire year. And finally, we had a greater uh, fuel consumption during the quarter due to an increase in thermoelectric generation that was uh, geared towards mitigating the hydrological effects. 
and this uh, generated a greater consumption if compared with the third quarter of 2020 uh, amount of 68 million. We have a non-recurrent amount of 34 million that refers to the reversal of impairment on assets. And this uh, reversal, of course, uh, allows us a more positive outlook for the return on these assets. You can see the increase of our EBITDA to 265 million reais, representing a growth of 18.5%. And if we look at the nine months of the year, we had an increase of 22.9%. If we look at net revenue, we had a growth in the quarter of 30.4%. And for the nine months as a whole, a reduction of our net income. This mainly caused by the uh, application of the variation of IGM in the accounts payable. And this generated a significant impact on our results. We would like to remind you that the impact on our results as a cash hedge throughout the period. And uh, this is where we have a significant amount of our revenues also indexed to IGPM as some of our contracts uh, will have their maturity during the year because of the difficulty of signing new contracts based on IGPM, we have requested to Anel to change this index to IPCA, as this will allow us greater efficacy in terms of the hedge. And we have received the approval already beginning in the month of October, all of our contracts will stop being indexed based on IGPM and will be updated based on the IPCA. To the left, you see there for the main amounts that have had an impact on our EBITDA, and most of them, of course, have already been mentioned Previously, when we were speaking about the main drivers during the quarter, we can now go on to page number six. I do believe that the participants can already see this as a highlight. The Gral Azul transmission system received the authorization for a commercial startup of the Ponta Grossa São Mateus do Sul and Ponta Grossa South Lines beginning in August of this year. And of course, this will add a small wrap when compared to the total amount of our uh, wrap, but this is at least the startup of the operation. Now, our forecast for the conclusion of this works continues to be at the end of the year. And with this beginning in January of the year 2022, we will receive the full RAP uh, referring to Grazia Azul transmission system. Another highlight, we received the authorization from ANEL for the operation of the wind power uh, units of Campo Largo 2. And this means that we now have the full asset under operation. It is important to mention that with this wind plant, we will have approximately 1.3 gigawatts of installed capacity uh, when it comes to wind power.
I'm afraid I hear some echo. Perhaps we can make an adjustment here. Uh, another highlight, we had the conclusion of the sale of the Jorge Lacerda Thermal Complex. Now, this operation was closed on October 18th of this year after we fully complied with all conditions precedent. With this, we are able to reduce by 75% our emissions and the outlook with the sale of this asset that operates on coal for Pampa Sul is something that will happen in 2022. This is the outlook that we have. We will once again remanage our energy portfolio and work with more renewed energy. We would like to remind you that because of the sale of Jorge Lacerda Thermal Complex, we continue to purchase energy in the year 2021. The purchase is for the full generation of the plant. And between 2022 and 2024, we will be purchasing a different amount. This has been very important for us as part of the portfolio management process. Next slide, please. As another highlight, we have uh, acquired the photo, Asuso photovoltaic complex in Rio Grande do Norte, very close to our uh, sun uh, asset with an installed capacity of 750 megawatts. And this uh, points to the continuous growth that we have in our portfolio uh, in terms of renewable energy. Now we have already received all of the prior licenses. We already have a lease contract for the areas that have been signed up and we have an advanced process to be able to obtain the uh, operation permits for this asset. Uh, it is very probable that we will be ready to make this project feasible with an additional benefit, which is a reduction in the cost of transmission and generation and distribution as well. And this extends until March of the coming year. Another highlight, we were one of the 14 Brazilian companies that were uh, named as being the most transparent in terms of sustainability among 70 companies that were assessed. Now, this is an award that is given out by the Observatorio da Transparencia. And once again, this uh, shows the commitment that we have with the ESG practices. And this is one of the factors through which we are able to maintain a very high sustainability index since we were created. And there are several Brazilian companies that are part of this global reporting initiative, the GRI in Brazil. Another aspect I would like to highlight is the completion of the upgrades in our generator at the Salto Zorio hydroelectric plant where we added seven megawatts to the energy portfolio. We are also presently undergoing the maintenance of all of the other units of this plant. 
to be able to maintain the asset's operational performance and so that it can operate at its uh, full installed capacity. I did forget to mention that as NG, we received the transparency trophy. This is a trophy that is organized by Arempak, and it is a proof of our commitment with uh, governance practices and transparency. And finally, we were the winners of examining the millores and mayores in the energy category. Once again, we have been awarded because of our good governance practices, transparency, and the quality of the management. I will now give the floor to Rafael Bozio, who will be speaking on the next slide. And when I return, I will offer you more details on our financial performance during this quarter. Uh, please, Rafael, thank you. Malta, slide number nine, please. This is a slide where we present and update our energy commercial strategy. I believe that the main novelty in this slide is the update of our energy balance that you will find uh, in the graph to the left where we have made an adjustment of our contracting projection of the company for the coming years, already considering the sale of the Jorge Lacerda complex, which means that we have taken away the capacity of Georgie Lacerda from the line of the company resources, and we have made an adjustment uh, for uh, purchases for resale, as mentioned by Malta. We will acquire 400 average megawatts beginning the year, and for the rest of this year, with this readjustment, you will observe that we still maintain a very comfortable position of available energy in the portfolio to mitigate the GSF impacts in the short and long term. Now, the volume of this available energy will be adjusted through time based on our forecast of hydrology demands and as these become ever more precise. In the rest of the slide, we show you how diversified our sales are in the free contracting market. We always attempt not to have a concentration in a specific segment and our gradual sales energy strategy. Although we have uncontracted energy for 2026, through the years, this availability will be reduced until it comes to a position that we deem to be optimal. Slide 10, please. Still speaking about the energy commercial strategy, here we can observe the impact of our strategy for protection against GSF. We held back the sales this year to be able to guarantee available energy. And of course, this means a loss of revenue. But on the other hand, it is a considerable reduction in terms of cost as the acquisition price in the short-term market, especially in the third quarter, 
was much higher than our average sales price. It reached 581 highs in the quarter. This also reduces our market share, but uh, it is a one-off situation which should begin to be reverted with an enhancement of the hydrological situation observed in September and October with a good forecast for November. We can continue to better gauge this availability and perhaps sell this energy in the coming years. We go into the next session beginning in slide 11. We go on to slide 12 more specifically, where we would like to uh, update you in our projects under implementation. First, we have the Santo Agostino Wind Complex. Santo Agostino is a project with an installed capacity of 434 megas. The licenses have already been obtained and we are evolving in terms of the other documents. We can completed the mobilization of contractors in charge of civil works. We already began the construction activities for access, excavation, the base for the generators, as you can see in the pictures, and the installation of medium voltage grid and the collecting station. The forecast for entry into operation continues to be March of 2023. Next slide, please. Slide 13 where we present an update of the implementation of the Gralaya Azul transmission system. As Malta mentioned, we celebrated the beginning of the commercial operation of two small lines. This is a significant framework for the company. It confirms that we are now also in the transmission business with the Ponta Grossa uh, and San Mateos do Sul and Pontra Grossa lines. And the rest of the project is foreseen for the fourth quarter, enabling us to fully receive the RAP that we are entitled to. In the next slide. We would like to present an update of the Novo Estado uh, Transmisora de Energia transmission line. At the end of September 2021, the project was at 90%. We continue with the assembly part, the transmission line conductor cabling installed, the substation is underway. And we are foreseeing the generation of the first systems in the fourth quarter, allowing us to receive about 55% of the RAP. The entry into operation will now be the first semester of 2022. We go on to the next slide, slide number 15, where we present the assessment process for the photovoltaic complexes Paracatu and Floresta that now belong to our controlling company, NG. Now, we installed a process with related parties to uh, assess this. We have had a significant strides. We have contract at the consultancy firms that will support this evaluation process. And here you see the list of companies. I draw your attention to Bradesco as a financial advisor, uh, our legal advisors, as well as additional advisors. This process is moving forward with the necessary transparency. Next slide, please. Uh, in this slide, you see an update of the Jidao electrical plant that still belongs to the 
holding company. They have 40% of this asset with other partners. This is already under operation and has provided highly consistent operational results. I would like to highlight a feed of 99.2% in the third quarter. Now, this is an asset that has overcome some uncertainties and that can be offered to NG Brasil Participações, as well as Paracatu and Floresta, but it has to undergo the assessment of the independent committee of related parties. We end this session on slide 17, where we are updating the volume, the number of projects and the installed capacity that we have in the most advanced projects with the acquisition of the Azul Sol photovoltaic complex that was already mentioned that added 750 megas to the portfolio. We now go beyond to 1.2 gigas, a very consistent portfolio and aligned with our growth in renewable energy and in accordance with our purpose of accelerating the transition to a uh, carbon neutral economy with sustainable uh, projects, environmentally sustainable projects. I would now like to return the floor to Malta to speak about our financial performance on slide number 18. Thank you very much, Rafael. We go on to slide 19. On this slide, you can see the soundness of our financial performance. You can see the return on equity. We maintained uh, levels that are always above 30% in terms of return over invested capital. We had a significant increase in the quarter, and this is basically due to recording the effects of the renegotiation of the hydrological risk of 372 million, which I mentioned previously. To the right in the graph, we offer you information on the company's financial information during the last five years. During that period, we have invested over 19 billion reais with a significant leverage. Our proprietary installed capacity grew 24%. We acquired a stake in TAG, thus entering the gas transportation activity. We are also uh, in the transmission area and we have 2,800, 2,800 kilometers under construction. All of these initiatives are geared towards a greater diversification of our portfolio with truly expressive returns. Our EBITDA grew 74% during this five-year period, net income with a growth of 66%, and we have paid out dividends and shareholder equity of more than 9.1% billion reais. Slide 20, please. In this slide, we show you the evolution of our uh, net operating revenue. And you can see the transactions carried out with a CCEE, 102 million due to the increase in our thermoelectric generation. We also have inflation on our assets, financial asset, with an impact of 49 million reais, and uh, price and sales volumes for energy with a reduction in the revenue line of 60 million in transmission 
we have added an additional 104 million reais to our revenues. Slide 21, please. Here you can see the financial performance of TAG during the quarter. This was very expressive. TAG had an increase of 147 million reais and our stake in those 147 million contributed to an increase in our results of 48 million reais an increase that represents 46% of the TAG uh, profit during this period. Now, the main reason for this increase in TAG's financial enhancement was the update of the sales contracts that it has. We would like to remind you that most of the contracts are indexed to the IGPM and we are able to capture significant results for our own results. Next slide, please. Here you can observe the EBITDA evolution and many of the amounts that are here have already been uh, mentioned as highlights at the beginning of the presentation. Nevertheless, I would like to reiterate in a more objective way that the main component that adds value to the EBITDA was the register of the repactuation or renegotiation of the hydrological risk that has added 372 million to our results. Other important effects are the reduction of the purchases in our portfolio, along with a reduction in the energy sales volume if we consider the increase of our uh, energy sales revenue because we have applied inflation to our contracts, the CCEE. Uh, it is important to mention that the variation between quarters generated a reduction of 203 million reais. Now this happened because in the third quarter of last year, we had a creditor's position and this generated important revenues during the quarter. Now, the impact of the GSF and the transactions carried out at CCEE this quarter were of only 80 million reais in the transmission segment as mentioned, an increase of 89 million in the results because of the uh, increase in the CAPEX on works besides uh, applying the inflation on our financial asset. Next slide, please. Here you see the evolution of our net income and the impact of EBITDA as we have already broadly discussed another negative effect in the result due to the update of some of our debts that are indexed to the IPCA. Slide 24, please. In this slide, we see the uh, position of our debt and you can see our capital structure, which is quite favorable uh, if we consider our ambition to grow our leverage, uh, net debt EBITDA uh, end of the quarter at two times, a very uh, comfortable, appropriate level of, if we consider our growth strategy and the increase in the debt is basically uh, due to the 
withdrawals that we made for the funding of Gralla Azul and Novo Estado plants. We ended the quarter with 4.6 billion reais, a very robust sum, and a net debt of 14 uh, billion reais. In the next slide, number 25, here you see the debt profile and the makeup, a duration of 6.9 years. Another important factor is that in the past, we made the decision to swap the debt index to the CDI. And we have debts that will mature this year in 2021 and will also uh, mature in the year 2022. So because of this decision, we have an important impact on our financial results, a significant impact. The composition of our debt, most of which is indexed to the IPCA and the nominal cost of debt of 12.8% uh, this quarter equivalent to an IPCA plus 2.3%. Next slide, please. Here you see our CAPEX, our investments throughout the last few years, significant investments, as you can observe here in 2021, a concentration of investments in our Gral Azul and Novo Estado transmission projects and beginning in 2022, as mentioned, we have the forecast for CAPEX for the Santo Agostino project that is already undergoing implementation. Next slide, please. This slide shows you the background ground of our payout of dividends and confirms the commitment of paying uh, out as much as we can in dividends. We have during the last years had a payout of 100% in the first semester of 2021. We approved the payout of the results of the semester and the amount is approximately 790 million reais. What we expect is that until the end of the year, these amounts will all be paid out. It's possible that in the coming months, we will be communicating this to the market, informing the market on the date in which these dividends will be paid out. With this, we would like to end the presentation and I would now like to offer the floor for questions and answers. It will be a pleasure, of course, to share with you additional information or, or to dissipate your doubts. Uh, Chago, you may proceed. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now go on to the question and answer session. Should you wish to pose a question, please press star one. To withdraw your question from the queue, please press star two. Once again, we would like to remind you that should you wish to pose a question, please press star one. If you would like to withdraw your question from the list, press star two.
Should you wish to pose a question, please press star one. To withdraw your question from the queue, please press star two. Chago, I have received a question here from Carol, Maria Carolina Carneiro from Credit Suisse on the contracting of energy during the half year PPA and prices. It's a semester in which liquidity was quite low, if you could remark on this. Thank you for the question, Carol. Well, this was a critical quarter because of hydrology. We had to have uncontracted energy to be able to mitigate our GSF risks. Now the market had very limited liquidity and of course, it's natural that potential clients will try to access us for a medium term purchase of energy. And uh, we have to supply this energy beginning in 2021 or 2022. Uh, so that we can maintain a uh, balance in our short-term portfolio to mitigate the GSF risk. And because of this, in the average energy price, we do have to include the price to replenish our portfolios, especially for the years 2021 and 2022. Now, to be more objective, the sales volume for short-term contracts was very small because of the prices, of course, and because of our need to protect the portfolio. And we did have some sales operations for the medium term. Another question coming from Carol from Credit Suisse. She mentions that there was a large demand for renewable assets. Several companies uh, buying portfolios for the quarter, both solar and wind power. If we could share what we think about the valuation of these assets and if there is a very healthy demand for these assets in the segment, of course, for renewable energy. Yes, there is a heated demand and we observe a significant competition for projects during this period. We had a significant volume of projects with the goal of capturing a reduction in uh, transmission and distribution costs. And because of this demand for the reduction in the cost of fees, we have approximately eight gigas uh, uh, of projects that are under development. We have a portfolio that we are going to approve and uh, fully define. And our preference was to sell this energy to the free contracted market where we are able to capture more attractive prices to make our projects feasible. Now, when it comes to the CAPEX that we have, we have uh, verified new projects and we're surprised with the uh, levels of CAPEX. In the case of Santo Agostino, for example, the estimate is of 5.3 million per megawatt installed. 
and we have seen projects that have an outlook for becoming feasible with a capex of 4 million reais per installed megawatt. And because of the significant increase in the price of commodities, our expectation is that this CAPEX will go beyond what we have made available to Santo Agostino and the outlook therefore will be between 5.3 and 6 million reais per megawatt hour. It is important to underscore here that despite the increase in the price of commodities regarding Santo Agostino, we uh, have a contractual protection. We have worked with a uh, hedge for exchange rate and commodities, which is always necessary to mitigate any risk. And we have the confidence that we will deliver the project with the levels and returns that we deem necessary. It's very probable that we will suffer pressure from our suppliers, of course, but as mentioned before, our contract is quite robust with warranties and significant amounts. Uh, should we have the need to renegotiate with uh, vendors, this will not generate a significant impact on the project. Thank you very much, Malta. We now have a question from Andres Sampaio from Santander Bank, which is the inorganic growth strategy for the coming years, which will be the focus on segments and how to have a good growth to have an impact on such a large company as NG. Our focus continues to be on renewable energy. We truly believe in opportunities, not only in wind projects, but also solar projects. We have uh, realize that it is relevant for us to diversify our investments in solar energy to complement our wind power portfolio. We know that the intensity of wind is more significant during uh, some periods, uh, early in the morning, for example, and uh, wind and solar projects have a greater energy consumption during the day. And we see that we have to have a better balance in our portfolio. We have observed some opportunities in the market and we're always extremely uh, attentive to any possibility of enhancing our portfolio with these investments in transmission as well. We have acquired vast experience with the implementation of our two projects. We entered this activity recently and we had already imagined our performance in terms of the implementation and compliance with deadlines and CAPEX and all of this gave us greater security to expand our investments in the field of transmission. And as I mentioned, we have verified several of the projects that have been made feasible with an estimate for low CAPEX in the short and medium term. Without a doubt, very interesting opportunities will arise for m &As as we have already had in the past. So we will be prepared to capture these opportunities. 
And as we have already mentioned, we have a capital structure that will uh, enable us to have this financial soundness and will give us tranquility to capture good opportunities in the market. Thank you very much, Malta. And uh, in terms of capital structure, a question from Juliana from the uh, UBS. Uh, NG is a company that has always had a very good balance sheet and less volatile results. The question is if the increase in CELIT will lead us to review our CAPEX plan or our uh, capital structure. As mentioned, we do have a robust capital structure with room to fund the equity of these projects. And when we were speaking about the five-year history, we have a leverage of 85%, which is uh, very significant. Despite what we have observed in the financial market, we can still uh, capture uh, very good deals. And in the recent issuance of debentures to finance the Santo Agustino project, we uh, saw that the levels of the rates were quite favorable. But I do agree that if we think about the short and medium runs, the outlook is to always assess the possibility of anticipating some fundraising. We need to have a more positive outlook to be able to make feasible new projects and new M&A opportunities. This is a very important factor that, of course, is something that we constantly think about and that we deem necessary to have a strategy to alter our capital structure. Now, if we need to do it, we will. Thank you, Malta. We have received several questions. I'm trying to filter them so that we can have a more logical uh, sequence here. We have a question that refers to growth here. In truth, two questions from our uh, individual investor, Antonio, that refers to the generation activity of the company, thinks it's important to have intermittent energy assets operated by gas. In terms of gas, fuel, thermal plants, our current outlook is that we have more interesting opportunities in the market uh, when it comes to return. The focus is on uh, uh, solar, wind, and renewable energy at present. Now, those who uh, enter the uh, gas field thermal plants will have a competitive edge in the implementation of the projects. When it comes to the investments in hydroelectric assets in the last few years, what we have seen are scanty projects that could become feasible we have a significant environmental issue that will make it difficult or make it almost impossible to build large uh, reservoirs because they take away the competitiveness of hydroelectric projects. 
there are several m a opportunities. Uh, well, we have a great deal of experience in the management of hydroelectric projects, and this could generate a competitive edge. And in our portfolio, we have a great deal of diversity. But we have seen very few interesting opportunities in terms of hydroelectric plants because of that vast experience. Nevertheless, we will be very uh, attentive to good opportunities. Malta, we're going to change topics. We have several questions on growth here, but let's change topics. A question from another individual shareholder that is always with us. He's asking about the interest of uh, developing the distribution despite the growth in the market of solar energy. Perhaps this could be an opportunity the goal of entering this activity was to get a better grasp of the market. What we observed was enormous competitiveness. We have competitors with cost levels, with cost structures that are much below ours. And we do have governance standards. We have our controller that also participates in the management of our business as it participates in several of our investments worldwide. And what we have realized is that it's going to be very difficult to be competitive uh, if we significantly expand our portfolio, we have seen some important players investing in this case. We have heard comments that the results can end up being significant, but our experience in this market is somewhat uh, beneath what we had expected. So our outlook is to focus on more significant investments, investments that will add greater value. As I mentioned, to set up a portfolio uh, that is, uh, has a more uh, robust production of solar and wind power is not an easy task. So our decision is to practically leave this market. We are mapping the market to uh, check on potential buyers. This is our vision on this activity, and this is our investment strategy. Thank you, Malta. Once again, we change uh, focus somewhat. Victor Burk asks, well, this is a very difficult question, which is the company's expectation for GSF in 2022? And perhaps you could... Uh, deal with this. Well, the hydrological scenario still generates a great deal of uncertainty. We had a very positive surprise with the rainfall in October. It was one of the best levels, the best rainfall levels historically for this month. And we do have a positive outlook for the month of November as well. As you can observe, the prices had a significant drop in October. And uh, this will be repeated in November. It's still premature to speak about the outlook of GSF for the coming year. Everything will depend 
on the end of this wet period and the uh, another uncertainty is the load factor the growth uh, economic growth outlook and we cannot forget that the levels of the reservoirs are still uh, below what they should be and they are at approximately 25 and 28 percent and this is our outlook so despite the uncertainties and because of the present day scenario what we can say is that we will still have Uh, less uh, severe levels of GSF than we had this year. And who knows, the outlook will not be very positive once again. We hope not to have to go through another year like 2021. It was one of the more critical ones in our historical series. It is also important to mention that this quarter was the most critical in terms of GSF. The GSF stood at 51.3% very significant and with a PLD at the ceiling at the very top. I mentioned the impact of negative 80 million in our result. And this is very low if we consider the outlook of a more severe GSF Thank you, Malta. As I showed you our energy balance in the presentation, the company is prepared to face up to and mitigate the impacts of the GSF. We have adopted a more conservative stance and our strategy will be adjusted uh, according to our advance and this will enable us to be more precise in our estimates. We all well prepared. The uh, GSF has improved. There is a reduction for 2022, but it still merits attention. And without a doubt, the government will act upon this to avoid this happening again with positive impacts for the final consumer and all of the agents in the sector. Rafael, I would like to underscore what you said for 2022 as a process of portfolio management, we are protected. We have been very conservative initially when it comes to risk mitigation. And of course, month after month, we assess the GSF outlook. It is very difficult to know what will happen in 2022. But based on our monthly assessments, well, they're practically daily or weekly, we do make adjustments in our portfolio and perhaps we could release some energy for sale if the outlook ends up being one for a better behaved GSF. This always uh, and when we have more favorable prices for energy. I don't want to have to convey a very negative outlook for the GSF. The challenge, of course, is to foresee what will happen with GSF. Thank you, Malta.
we still have some questions that I have not asked here, but they do relate to other questions that have already been read. They have been, haven't been responded fully. They have been responded partially. We are at the disposal of the market and we can dissipate your doubts after the close of this call. With this, we would like to end the question and answer session and I would like to give the floor to you, Malta, for the closing remarks. Thank you everybody for your participation and for the opportunity of conversing a bit about our results. It is always an enormous pleasure for us. At this point, we would like to end our video conference call. I wish you all a very good week and hope to see you the coming quarter. Thank you very much. And uh, a last piece of information on December 10th, we will have our investor day at NG and we do count upon your participation. Thank you very much and have a good weekend once again. And unfortunately this year, investors day will once again be virtual. We hope that the coming year, we will be able to meet face to face. It is important for us to have this opportunity to hold conversations face-to-face -face with you. Thank you. The NG video conference ends here. We would like to thank all of you for your participation. Have a good afternoon.